Hello there, Dr. Mintz here. This is a patient uh, who had abdominal pain, routine CT, came into the ER. And uh, let's see what we have here. Let's just go over some basic anatomy. Here we have the lower chest showing the right atrium and right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. So this is myocardium and right ventricle, left ventricle. It is more rightward, but it's probably more anterior to the left than rightward of it, or in most patients it is. This is about even, because this is a 45 degree angle, more or less. And it's hard to see where the atrium, like here, the right atrium and the right ventricle, are separate from one another. And here's the left atrium and left ventricle. Left ventricle you can always recognize because it has the thicker myocardium all the way around it, whereas the right ventricle, which doesn't need that much pressure, it's only supplying blood to the lungs, uh, it has a lot less myocardium, at least on this side, but the shared border, of course, has to meet the demands of the more demanding chamber, which is the left ventricle. Now, this is the kind of image I love right here because you can see that there are these strings that are going to this little structure here in the left ventricle. Well, this is a, a structure that is the a papillary muscle. And those are the cordae tendinia. These are the little strings that go from the papillary muscle to the, the margins of the valve leaflets. So this compensates this. I love this, this feature of physiology in the heart that the papillary muscle contracts in order to gather up the slack that otherwise would develop when the, when the heart contracts. Why would there be slack developing in these little strings that, ed, that come off the edge of the valve leaflets going to the papillary muscles? Because the length of the heart contracts. It doesn't just go squish, squish like that. It, does a tw it twists like this. So, and it optimizes how much efficiency you can get out of that muscular contraction so it goes and so it's a twisting action that also includes a shortening of the long axis of the heart so that would give you slack in the corda tendinia which would cause the valve leaflets themselves to push back into the atrium which would not be a very good state of things. So that's my little spiel on the corda tendinae and the, and the papillary muscles. And what would this structure be here? That's the esophagus. And here is a vascular structure enhancing, and that is what? The aorta. Forgive me if you're more advanced in this subject, but I think we need to make sure we touch on those subjects once in a while as well. And a little more advanced, if this is aorta, what are these two little dots? What are those two little dots? This is the azagous vein and this is the hemiazagous vein. And these are structures that afford some additional drainage pathway for the structures below the diaphragm. So things are, blood is coming up from below the diaphragm in the, hemi, in the azagous and hemiazagous vein and they in turn course all the way up, let's see, oh, we don't go up high enough to see that they indeed empty into the SVC. Okay, so here we have the liver. Okay, now if that's the liver, then let me tell you, let me ask you, what, what kind of vessels would these be? Would these be portal veins, hepatic arteries, hepatic veins? Well, let's see, they're branching into different portions of the liver. And if we follow this back, let's see what it becomes. Aha, aha. It has a tributary coming from the spleen. So this is a splenic vein. And this is also, this is a splenic vein here. Let me make that very clear, here. And it's going all the way over to the spleen, if you care to follow it. There you go, splenic vein. And this is the portal confluence, which means if you follow this spot downward, like this, you don't see it well, but this is the superior mesenteric vein. 
paralleling the superior mesenteric artery. The mesenteric artery is what has fat all the way around it, so that's just a little dot in the middle of fat, but the, the superior mesenteric vein comes up right like that and joins into, joins the splenic vein to form the portal vein. So this, you can call that junction, the portal confluence, and then it heads up and to the right, into the right upper quadrant, to enter the liver as the portal vein, where it then gives rise to left and right portal branches of the portal vein. Okay? All right, now if we go up to, let's see, this is a superior mesenteric artery that dives downward there. So you have superior mesenteric vein and superior mesenteric artery. But if you follow that up, so this is the origin of the superior mesenteric artery, then right superior to that, a little bit higher, is the celiac artery, which gives rise to the splenic artery and the hepatic artery. Okay, and here you can see the hepatic artery as a little branch, or not. Let's see, there it is. So here it is, the splenic artery is going off this way, and the hepatic artery is going off this way, but it's obscured by the splenic, or the uh, portal vein there. Okay. Kidneys have a nice symmetric enhancing pattern. They should be very, very symmetric. This always looks like a sliced tomato to me. Uh, and it just has to do with the phase of the enhancement. This is a little, here we have a fairly early phase. So the cortex is pretty enhanced, but the portal, or but, but the uh, pyramids are not as enhanced. Here you have a small cyst. A renal cyst is characterized by having smooth margins all the way around and uniform low attenuation within. If it breaks those rules, you have to worry about it being something else like a partially cystic renal cell carcinoma. Now, here's the kicker. Drum roll, please. Take a look there. Anything that you are surprised about? Do you see anything that you're not sure what it is? Let's see, here you have right colon, cecum probably. Here's left colon going up toward the hepatic or the splenic flexure. So look here, what do we see? We got a, this is part of the content of the cecum. And this is, uh, this is, what is this? What is that? That's the question, that's the million dollar question here today. What is this thing here? And here's part of it too. It's a long tubular structure. And you might get the feeling that it is emanating from the left colon because of its proximity. But in fact, this is cecum here. And this is the appendix. So here it is coming around like this. This is cecum, which is laying in front of the urinary bladder and the uterus. And the appendix is coming off. And it's not like it knows which way to go when it comes off. And so the fact that the cecum is low and in the midline and pointed off in this way is enough to make the appendix go off that way. And so that's what we have, a left lower quadrant appendix. So don't be 100% sure that you don't have appendicitis if you've looked in the right lower quadrant but haven't really identified the full length of the appendix. And that's about it.